welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we have George Digweed bringing home the bacon in his quest for boar. The Banwen Miners Hunt are on song both in the valleys and at the local curry house. We have more gun dog training tips thanks to our experts and their Skinner's fed canines. First, it's a battle of speed and agility. We're hunting hares with golden eagles. Although it may look like Roy has opened a pet pampering parlour, this is all part of being a dedicated eagle falconer. Just as their diet and weight needs constant monitoring, so do all the other important bits. You wouldn't take a racing car ride without warming the tyres, or an aeroplane up without checking flaps and ailerons, would you, Ginger? Likewise, you don't take a golden eagle out after hares without dry feathers, but this comes with a serious health warning. Teflon coated stuff kills birds, be it a parrot or a peregrine. If your bird inhales the heated gas, then that can kill them. Um, a lot of the, the parrot forums talk about it as well, uh, with people cooking in their houses with uh, Teflon pans. And again, the, uh, the fumes from those can kill the birds. So if you're using something like that, then obviously just be incredibly careful and make sure it hasn't got a PTFE or Teflon coating on it. From fluffing feathers to the beak bar for a bit of a trim. In the wild, they'd be eating a lot more hard bone material um, than we currently feed them when we're flying them. So they're constantly wearing their beak down and they also do what we call feeking. So they rub their beak on rocks and uh, that trims them as well. But when we're flying them, a lot of the time, they're eating reasonably soft food, so the beak can become overgrown quite quickly. Obviously there's no discomfort, it is just, just like trimming your nails. Who's a pretty boy then? Lincolnshire is well known for its hares and Roy and his friends have been coming to this part of England for years. There's a promise of some serious action today and with four male goldies and one female, our chances are good. A female golden eagle and male golden eagle, so you can see the female is uh, comparatively larger and that's pretty much all the way through with most birds of prey that the females are normally about a third larger. They are uh, much more capable of taking fox and on the continent obviously they fly uh, a lot of roe deer as well. With them. The guys line up. Roy choreographs the beating line. It's going to be hard going today with the heavy Lincolnshire soil but there are definitely hares to be had here. Gary has the first flight. It's Brown hairs one, eagles nil. Uh, luckily it went downhill so he, he got a bit of steam up and, and took it. Um, sat on it, balled up and as I started to run he, it popped up out of his feet and, and ran off. <laughs> Which is hunting unfortunately. The next drive flushes more hairs. Unfortunately Mark's youngster doesn't have the juice to keep chasing this high speed quarry. It was a shame about Mark's young eagle there. Um, it was just too much for it with the wind that he's got. The wind's picked up a little bit, so uh, trying to expect it to fly into that sort of heavy wind, it, uh, it just took the, uh, the speed out of it and uh, the eagle knew that he didn't quite have the power to catch up with the hare. The guys walk field after field. The hares at this time of year are properly match fit, so are really testing the birds. The most exciting flights of the day are in the afternoon. Roy spots a hare in its seat. Let's watch that again in slow motion. Roy's male eagle, Baby, chases down the hare, which at the last moment turns to face its pursuer. Incredibly, the hare judges to the nanosecond when Baby is going to commit. He spins up into the air, away from those razor-sharp talons, and makes his escape. When you see the hares doing manoeuvres like that, you really do have to question whether that is an inherent behaviour. They know how to avoid an, an airborne predator or if they've run the gauntlet and avoided buzzards when they were a lot younger, when they were being predated upon as leverets. But uh, whichever way around, they, uh, they really, really do demand a lot of respect as a quarry. Next up for a decent flight is Gary's bird. The fur flies, but again the hare slips through his talons. Ah! 
There are more close calls and all the birds get some hunting. It's really exciting stuff, but the hares have won today and Roy finds it tough to admit defeat. No, no, oh, no, don't, oh, do I? Oh. Yeah, great misses. Right, hang on. Oh, you don't know how much this hurts me. All in all, we had a, uh, a superb day, some brilliant sport. Um, some very, very close calls. How the birds didn't keep hold of some of those hairs, I don't know. I think somebody must have come out last night and smothered a few of them in grease because uh, they were definitely slipping out of the birds' feet on this occasion. So uh, we shall have to try harder next time. With hunting, there's always tomorrow. And after a misty start, the Lincolnshire countryside clears. Finally, the eagles find their targets. Baby shows us how it's done. We spotted a, another hare in the seat and walked it up and that ran perfectly. So uh, it ran down the field and uh, gave him a, a little bit of an advantage. And uh, he made short work of that and cut into it. So again, when you see an experienced eagle fly, they'll go at it, cut round to the side and then come back into it. So uh, it just puts the hair off. On this second flight, the experience of a bird with seven seasons under its wings is clear. Instead of crashing into the hedge after the hare, Baby bides his time, waiting for the hare to appear the other side. His patience pays off with a majestic 400-yard flight. He's got it! Yeah! Eagle falconers are a dedicated bunch, putting in hours of work and preparation for a flight that could last just a few seconds. It's a drug, and Roy can't give it up. You find the best flights when it's a 50-50 chance whether the, uh, the quarry escapes or, or whether the, the bird does well and uh, I, th I think that's really what drives us and, and that's what keeps us going. Just the uh, wanting to, to be part of the hunt, wanting to see it and having nature in its rawest form played out in front of you. And nature has given both the predator and prey the best tools for the job. Well, we've made lots of films about both eagles and falconry and, of course, with Roy Lupton. They should be uh, appearing on the screen just there. You can click on that if you're watching this on YouTube and go straight through to watch some of them. Now, from the high-octane world of falcons to the more sedentary Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The Angling Trust has brought out a video spelling out the problem of cormorants on freshwater fish stocks. The Angling Trust admits that the predators are part of a natural ecosystem. However, there are many places where ecosystems are not natural or where fish populations are suffering from other impacts. The Trust adds that anglers who try to apply for licences to shoot cormorants and gooseanders find the process bureaucratic. One of its members had 85 cormorants sitting on a pylon overlooking his fishery and was given a licence to shoot two. The Thorsby Country Fair in Nottinghamshire on the 2nd and 3rd of March sees major changes this year. It's bigger and better with three main show arenas. Among attractions are daredevil stunts, fast and scurry racing, dog displays and falconry. There are also more traditional countryside attractions such as long netting, ferret racing and gun dog displays. There's a falconry village and arena and an owl show. It's all taking place at Thorsby Park with the backdrop of the Thorsby Hall Hotel near Ollerton. Visit livingheritagecraftshows.co.uk. An RSPCA private prosecution brought against a Cheshire Hunt supporter. His partner and their 19-year-old daughter has collapsed on the first morning of a three-day trial at Crewe Magistrates Court. The family were accused of interference with a badger set when Mr Watson was assisting the Cheshire Hunt. RSPCA prosecutors admitted, despite knowing all the facts of the case for more than a year, that there was no realistic prospect of conviction on the evidence and the case was dismissed, with the taxpayer picking up £10,000 worth of costs. The American star of the film Walk the Line, Joaquin Phoenix, has made a film for animal rights group PETA in order to persuade you to go vegan. In it, he highlights the fact that fish caught commercially are not knocked on the head, but drown in the air. He does this by re-enacting what it's like to be a fish out of water. You provide the punchline. For the rest of the film, click on the link on the screen. The Scottish Government plans to massacre nearly 700 mainly pregnant deer on a Scottish estate to meet targets. 
Scottish Natural Heritage says the area in Angus has not met a 10-year-old government-imposed target of 19 animals per square kilometre, so it's moving its own shooters in to carry out the cull, even though most of the red hinds are in calf. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association has condemned the move, calling it a bloodbath. And finally, there are two remarkable stories of deer with their antlers locked this week. Both are from America and both are with whitetail bucks. In this one, one of the two deer had died. Illinois Conservation Police Officer Stephen Beltran was dispatched to break them free with a pruning saw on a long pole. The second film is even more remarkable and the clearest evidence we've yet seen that British police should be armed. The two deer have locked antlers as before. The officer uses his handgun to shoot once, twice, he moves position, Are the deer dead? They are not. They are separated. It might not be good deer management to have two partially deantlered bucks running around, but you have to admire the shooting. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, George Digweed, 20 times world champion shooter, has been having a problem with wild boar. You'd think the odds were loaded against the boar. Let's find out. We're in Sussex, where George Digweed's boar problem started last autumn, but the pheasant shooting season put a stop to any control measures. He has tried driving them in the daytime, lamping them at night time, and he still hasn't been able to enjoy that asterisk and obelisk moment of roast wild boar. Tonight he's feeling confident. The local gamekeeper has been putting some feed down and the boar have locked onto it. George hopes he will get a chance to pull the trigger on his 308. We're going to try and maximise our chances with some infrared filming. It is nowhere near the class of the night vision we've used recently, but we're hoping it'll give us an edge. What isn't giving an edge is the electric Polaris. Even though it's in stealth mode, the waterlogged fields give us away and our first bore doesn't stay around long enough for us. However, a second is just around the corner and George is quick to get onto it. The bore drops. We hold back and wait, but this pig isn't going anywhere. It's not something I like doing, but I would rather do it than have, you know, the cowboys riding around shooting them all up the arse. And, but I will always shoot them, you know, head or just behind the ear, um, you know, top of the neck somewhere there. And then, uh, you know, it guarantees a, a, an immediate kill where it is on the spot, you know, heart shots at this time of night. You know, everybody knows that with a heart shot, they tend to run. Yeah. And uh, in the dark, you can't, uh, you know, yeah. you could take a heart shot yeah. during the day because you could track it and find it. But at this time of night, you know, you've got no, no method of tracking it. So I will shoot somewhere where it's instantaneous. Our boar is a young male, which is some consolation to the world champion. Incredibly, boar don't have a closed season in the UK. You know, from the end of this month, I wouldn't want to be shooting sows. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an excellent size for the table. Uh, it'll eat well, uh, make some good sausages as well. So, you know, all in all, it's uh, an excellent, an excellent one to take. This boar fell under an oak tree where much of the damage to the pasture had been concentrated. And there's no doubt about it. They've got to be controlled. If you look behind you, you'll, uh, you know, you'll see the damage that they're doing here, look, just in here. You know, I mean, you know, and that's not, you know, if I put a, if I put an, just a, a knife in there, you can see how deep they're going down. You know, they're probably, there's a lot of acorn shucks here and that sort of thing. Probably looking for acorns from last year, but I mean, you can see how deep that is. So, uh, they're doing a lot of damage and, uh, and I, you know, I like to see them about and I'm, uh, I like to think of myself as a conservationist, but at the end of the day, everything needs to be controlled and uh and you know we've got to shoot one or two so uh so we roll one or two over and you know you come out and filmed it doing, being done properly and and uh, hopefully people will see it like that success at last george feels he's done his job on behalf of the landowner while ensuring that it was done to the best of his ability and there are some delicious sausages coming his way 
Well, we made lots of films about British wild boar, and you should be able to see some of them on that screen playing up there. Click on it if you want to go through to them. Now from wild boar to the wild Welsh hillside, Nicky Sadler has been off with the Banwyn Miners Hunt. Hi, I'm Nikki Sadler and I'm out in South Wales out hunting with the Banwyn Miners Hunt at one of their best meets. And guess where we are? How cool is this? At a curry house. <laughs> it's the Banwyn Miners 50th anniversary season. This used to be one of the best loved hunting pubs in the area. And even though there's been a bit of a culture change, the new Indian owners of this restaurant welcome the hunt just like the Glamorgan Arms used to. The master that I remember the most of would be William Hancock, uh, Bill, Billy. Uh, yeah, hunting through and through. I think if you cut him in half, you'd have Banwin Miners written <laughs> like a stick of rock going through his body. There's, there's actually a film that's available. I've got a copy of it at home, and it was filmed on the, on the day of the opening meet. And they, and they actually filmed the miners changing, coming up from the pit, showering, putting their hunt clothes on and coming out and there was a, uh, and the, and the guy on the film sort of said, and he says to the, 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 some of the boys in the film, you know, do, do, you, you know, do they take the mickey out of you sort of thing, and, oh yeah, they all call us the Lord and this, that and the other now and, the, uh, and it was just so out of character, you know, to see these red coats appearing and you know, long Welsh cobs and just uh, going across and hunting the coal tips really, just hunting the, the slag heaps and the, and the coal mines. Oh yeah, definitely, always has been, yeah, and, and Billy, um, as, I think he fought for that, to, to keep it that way. Earlier this morning, I met master huntsman Peter Astle at the Banwyn Smart, newly refurbished kennels. We'd never had the puppy show at the kennels before, um, before two years ago, uh, managed to have the puppy show at the kennels, uh, which, is, which is very nice, I think it's part of the kennels, um, and part of hunting really, and, and it's nice to have hounds showing in their own, own area really. Yes, that's right, yes, to the kennels, yes, yeah. After breakfast at a glam local establishment, we set off for the meet. This is a hunt that really welcomes youngsters. I was with a lady last week, who, uh, she's got the youngest member of the hunt, uh, the, her daughter's about six or seven years old, and she said to me, whatever is on, if there's show jumping or anything, and there's hunting on that day, if she asks the child, what do you want to do, I'm going to go hunting. And <laughs> she is... She's just great to see. She's, sometimes she's on a lead drain, sometimes she's not. When they're galloping along, she'd sort of tack in next to somebody else. And, but, and I just think these are the, it's the next generation. And, and the hunts that don't encourage the kids, I think they're the ones who struggle in the future. We follow a trail up Minnitha which is Welsh for mountain. Peter and his partner built some hunt jumps for the mounted field to pop. And even the hounds follow the trail over the log. The hunt has a strong sense of responsibility to local farmers and provides both a lambing call-out service, shooting foxes to order, and a free stock collection service. Since I've been here, I've tried to do as much as I can for the farmers. Um, I was farming born and bred, um, strong in the arm, thick in the head. Um, but um, I, uh, I, um, I try and do as much as I can for the farmers, as in fallen stock-wise, really. Um, <coughs> years ago, when I was here before, we used to, you know, I'd pick anything up to 22 calves a day. But the dairy herds have gone out of the country now. We haven't got the dairy herds. We had, we had 11, 12 dairy herds in the country then. Uh, we haven't got the dairy herds the same, so it's more of a struggle in that way. Sometimes we run a bit tight for flesh and I have to go into Carmarthen country to get flesh. Um, but um, generally, I like to try and do as much as we can. We do have goddards and we do have, um, uh, yeah, some others picking up in our country. Um, but, you know, we've all got to work together in the end of the day. And, you know, because I'm the local person, then I feel it's right that, you know, I should be doing our, our picking up in our area really um, and that's what I've tried to help the farmers with as much as I can. The Banwyn Miners is a fun-loving tight-knit community with many loyal followers. You will find several generations of the same family following the hunt here. They also welcome new faces as long as they love hunting. My wife she's hunting, I have a young kid I'm, I've been trained for dressage, she's hunting as well, she has a nice big horse there. I do come every week three horses here on this hunt. Yes, and I also I bring other people with me, not far from me, you know, if you want to hunt, talk, come. I know nice people, well, come with me, yeah, in this outdoor. It's nice because, like I said, you know, we need more people on the hunt. 
the hunt has given the field a fabulous gallop over beautiful Welsh hills and even provided welcome exercise for a handful of antis. We've had a lovely day out with the Banwin miners today, met some really lovely people and had a very warm Welsh welcome. If you'd like to find out more information about the Banwin, please visit their website www.banwinminershunt.co.uk and for further information about the Countryside Alliance and the Campaign for Hunting, visit www.countryside-alliance.org. Now from one kind of dog to another, it's the latest in our series on expert gun dog training tips with Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of dog food. Picking up game is a knack for any dog, especially with all the other excitements of the shoot day. Top gun dog trainer Ricky Maloney shows how to help them along and pick up really big game. I'm going to send the dog up for the herd just up the field. I want to give him as much experience of carrying these big heavy objects and managing them well. That's the idea. Go back. How do you get a dog to pick up game if, it, if it's not used to it? Is it just experience? I think it is experience. I think you, you, you can create problems. If I, if I look at the way Den handles hers at the moment, he's very lacking in confidence. The last thing I want to do is apply any pressure to him. So when he goes and picks it up and he drops it, I don't want to say, good boy, good boy, because then he's getting rewarded for dropping the hair. I don't want to say, I don't want to growl at him and grumble at him, because that type of dog who will, I'm in trouble for picking the hair. He might then just run back to me. So what I've got to do is I've actually got to let him, as painful as it might be for me watching, I've actually got to let him learn how to handle a hair. There's no shortcut, I've just got to let him keep picking, picking, picking. Ricky Milady runs Ribblesdale Labradors. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. Now, just in time to squeeze in a kit special. Kit Special this week looks at sporting guns that we love the most. Here's a quick review of the most popular second-hand guns on the new website, gunsdirect.co.uk. Starting with full-bore rifles and forgetting deer, the most viewed rifle on the site is a fox shooter's favourite, a new Savage Axis in 22-250 priced at £550. It has a Weaver 8x56 Classic K-Series scope Weaver mounts, Edgar Brothers bipod, and it is screw-cut for a moderator. At the big Biro end of the rifle world, the Axis does not come with Savage's popular Accu trigger. Most popular shotgun is a £350 Beretta. The 302 three shot multi choke was replaced in the 1980s by the 303, which in turn is now transmogrified into the 391. The 302's advantage is, like the one stroke engine in a Breton fishing vessel, it will continue to bang away in any weather, and even as it goes down with all hands. Top air gun choice on gunsdirect.co.uk is a BSA Mercury 22 for just £145. Launched in 1972, the Mercury is one up on specification from the BSA Meteor, which has sold 2 million worldwide. That's it. Feast your eyes, fish into your pockets. Thanks for watching. This is Kit Special. So the wider world of hunting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We head for America first, where Lil Deer Man 1 is, he says, squirrel hunting with my pop and his treeing squirrel dogs. Until they start barking at the bottom of a tree, these are fairly laid-back American hunting dogs and fairly laid-back shooters. There are times when you, the viewer, will see the squirrel even when they don't. Staying on squirrels and Malcolm Barnard of Country Pursuits TV has a short clip showing Jerry Moss of the Penrith District Red Squirrel Group knocking over two squirrels with one shot from a Daystate Wolverine 303. Now for a change of pace, we come down from the trees and head back in time to before the Second World War. YouTube is becoming a great place for archive films. Sent in by viewer Jan Renard from Belgium, Chassonneur Sass avant guerre shows a hare hunt in Alsace, France during the 1930s. Oui, c'est la guerre. The channel called Milt Milt 123 is not angling porn, but a reference to the name of its owner, Mick Milton, who sends me one of his videos on fly fishing for carp. Good commentary, lots of tips and tricks. His channel also 
has a useful film on fishing from his kayak at Newton, South Wales. Now we go to Canada for ice fishing on the Red River with Swamp Donkey 530. It looks like he uses a 1950s camera and the cars look 1960s, but the description assures us it was filmed in 2013. You will learn a lot about the process of ice fishing from this video, and you may enjoy the sweary banter between Swamp Donkey 530 and his mate. The bite is slow, but he picks up seven saugers and a couple of burbots. Back to the UK and our own Mark Gilchrist is pigeon shooting over laid wheat. It's a short video characterised by Mark shooting straight and talking straight both to dog and camera person. I must say how nice it is to have a chance to patronise Mark from the distance of hunting YouTube and not to his face. 102 is the bag in the end, and may he put up many more films. Staying with Columbidae, Dove Hunting 1 is one of the first films from a new hunting shooting YouTube channel called The Shooting Channel The PCP. Yup, both. His accuracy is magnificent, and you will marvel at his ability to aim off too. Finally, another newish channel, Young Country Sports, is out looking for rats with an air gun. Charlie Bryant and Neil Taylor do good work establishing what they are up to. Rat shooting, why they are doing it, rats are vermin, and then they settle back and start shooting. They're also showing off a device called the iScope, which in one shot records the pellet heading for the rat. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube, or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. We are back next week. If you have enjoyed this programme, please hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere around the outside of the screen on YouTube, or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom and pop your email address into the constant contact box, and we'll send you news of our programme. This has been Field Sports Britain.